imagine walking into a doctor's office. The doctor takes out his or her prescription pad and writes you an RX for a mobile video game. Or an obese patient walks into a doctor's office and the doctor prescribes capsules. And in those capsules are small particles which can expand 100 times in size in the gastrointestinal tract so that the patient feels full, eats less, and can lose weight. This might seem like futuristic fantasy lifted off of the pages of a science fiction novel, but these are real technologies that are being developed. And what I'd like to suggest to you today is that these technologies have two key characteristics and that these two characteristics will be the drivers for radical innovation in medicine going forward. So the first characteristic is that the therapies act on an entire physiological system rather than a single component of the system. So let's look at the video game and you see a actual screenshot of this video game which is designed to improve what's called executive function, attention and memory. And therefore has the potential to uh, be therapeutic for a number of uh, conditions such as ADHD to improve attention. Uh, if we look at this game, what it's doing is it's affecting the entire brain. And uh, the brain itself is composed of a number of components, the main one being a type of cell called neurons. And those neurons themselves have a number of components. For instance, on those neurons are receptors on the cell surface that bind neurotransmitters, say, a neurotransmitter serotonin. And so, uh, if you look at treating an actual system like the entire brain, or an entire system like the gastrointestinal tract, that's actually a very different approach than what traditional drug therapy does. Drugs, and you see some examples on this slide, are synthetic molecules, which are designed to bind to a very specific target, say that receptor on the surface of a neuron, uh, which is binding to a neurotransmitter like serotonin. In fact, a central premise of modern-day therapeutic drug design and discovery is that a drug should be as specific as possible for a particular target, say that receptor. Uh, in fact, in the pharmaceutical business, when a drug binds to multiple targets, we say that it's a dirty drug. And I can tell you that dirty definitely does not have a good connotation in this case. So why am I suggesting this somewhat radical notion of let's go after the whole system, not, let's not go after this very specific target. Well, if you look at the physiology which malfunctions in disease, it's actually very complex and we've evolved to be extremely complex. For instance, uh, this is happening to you right now and this represents a very, very small part of what's happening to you right now if you ate food today. Uh, and what you see is, obviously, there are multiple components that are involved. And one of the evolutionary advantages of complexity is that it allows for more function, and it also allows for redundancy. Now, why do we need redundancy in physiological systems? Well, think of this. If you have a component of a system, and that really has to function, it's mission critical, which in the case of physiology can mean if it doesn't function, you could die. Think about you're going skydiving and you jump out of an airplane, you really want the function of your parachute to work. And so what's the easiest solution to ensure functionality? Have a backup system, so have a backup parachute. And so what we've evolved is a number of redundant systems in the body. Now, the problem of complexity and redundancy have become two of the biggest challenges for modern medicine. As we've gotten more and more complex, it means that within any given system, more than one component can go wrong, and when multiple components go wrong, unless you address those multiple components all at the same time, you don't make an impact on disease. Likewise, with redundancy, you might be successful with one target. For instance, you can suppress one target that causes hunger in the body, but then another takes its place, and someone's still hungry, so they still want to eat and then would still gain weight. By targeting an entire system, it's possible to address multiple components at the same time, including these redundant components. 
Uh, for instance, you know, if you think about the video game targeting the entire brain, or in the case of these swelling particles, the gastrointestinal tract. The second characteristic of what I would suggest will be the most radical innovations in medicine will be the bringing together of fields that, if you look on the surface, have absolutely nothing to do with each other. So, you know, neuroscience, you see a brain there, and then you see a bunch of other disciplines that on the surface have nothing to do with medicine. So, for instance, entertainment, video games, or in the case of these expanding particles, weight management and material science. By bringing together these really disparate fields, one's able to create entirely new treatment modalities. Uh, so let's go and look at each of these examples of the expanding particles uh, for obesity in the video games in a little more detail. Uh, and I'll start with the obesity technology. Uh, so I work for a firm called PureTech Ventures, uh, where I'm involved in starting uh, life science companies and trying to develop these therapeutics. And when we went and thought about commercializing these expanding particles, one of the first things we did is we wanted to talk to doctors. It kind of makes sense. You want to see what will doctors think of this. And we had a, you know, I, I was talking to a doctor, and I had a very interesting kind of aha confirming moment. And I'll call it, you know, the case of the satiating dinosaur. So what is the satiating dinosaur? Well, I spoke to a family practice doctor, and he, I, I explained this concept, and he said, wow, that's a great concept. In fact, two days ago, I had the exact same idea. And I said, why is that? And he said, I had a child come in, and he swallowed one of these toys, you see those little capsules, drank a whole bunch of water, and, uh, whoops, <laughs> and uh, uh, it expanded, I guess, and so the child no longer felt uh, hungry. So we thought, okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. And by the way, I, I hope the takeaway from this talk is not to be, you know, please don't swallow a bunch of those capsules. That wasn't the idea. If you want to lose weight, that would not be a, a good thing. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and, and part of the reason for that is uh, if you look at the particles that I was talking about, and actually we'll uh, have the video, we'll go in queue now, uh, which will actually uh, show these particles. And these particles are actually composed of two different uh, food materials are actually made from food. In fact, everybody in this audience um, has eaten the two components that these particles are made from. The real breakthrough here was um, choosing those materials and how you put them together, which was really a breakthrough in material science as well as food science and combining that with the ideas from weight management. And I think we'll... Uh, see that in a second in the video. We'll see a demonstration of uh, the actual particles as they uh, expand. And as the video indicates, this is the first material of its type made entirely from food. Um, and that's really important from uh, a, a safety viewpoint. Uh, and as you'll see, as the idea is as this expands uh, and takes up volume, it gives a real sense of uh, satiety. So. I think we'll uh, have the video in a second. Excellent. And so what you're going to see here is uh, a capsule and uh, the contents being opened up in a glass of water. And this is time-lapsed uh, for the sake of brevity here. But you see the rapid hydration and expansion uh, that takes place, uh, with the idea, again, being to target the entire gastrointestinal tract. What happens is this material takes up volume in the stomach. Uh, in the large intestine, there are enzymes that cleave uh, what holds the two materials together. The water actually is then released, and the material uh, shrinks back to its uh, original sides and passes out in the same manner as food. Um, and as you can uh, imagine, if uh, with the greater volume associated with that in the stomach, uh, and this again is composed of food, uh, that would in fact give the sense of satiety uh, that you would expect with uh, greater filling of the stomach. Okay, um, so now let's talk about the second technology. Um, the second technology, which is the video game, is based principally on the work of Dr. Adam Ghazali from UCSF. And what Dr. Ghazali studies is a process called cognitive interference. This is distractions and interrupters, which happens to us every second of every minute of every day. In fact, it's happening to you right now. Uh, you know, you're trying to pay attention to me, at least I hope. 
You're probably thinking about lunch, which is coming up very soon. Uh, you listen to the instructions, and you actually put your cell phone on vibrate, but you feel it going off in your pocket, and you're thinking about, should I answer it or not? Well, it turns out that cognitive process involved in trying to process all those things when you're trying to pay attention to one task is a fundamental limiting factor in attention and working memory. And what Dr. Ghazali has been able to do is to measure uh, how well people do at processing this interference. And it turns out that in a number of different conditions, for instance, as we age, our ability to process interference goes down quite significantly. So by the time we're in our 60s and 70s, for instance, it's a fairly dramatic decline compared to when we're in our 20s. And what Dr. Ghazali has been able to do is to actually have a cognitive training program to have people have a dramatic improvement in their ability to process interference. So he took people in their 60s and 70s, and then were able to get them up to the level of someone in their 20s, and also showed that this transferred to untrained tasks involving attention and memory. And so uh, what we've done, at, and the company that I was involved in co-founding called the Killy Interactive Labs, is delivering this cognitive training in the format of a video game. And a video game is not only a good format for this training, but because a game is fun, it's medicine that someone actually will want to take. Um, and so the more someone is compliant with it and actually plays it, it actually has more of an effect. And so I'd actually like to now show a video uh, which shows the mobile video game uh, that we're developing. And again, you'll see that it's really um, bringing together video gaming uh, together with uh, neuroscience components. And so you're going to see one level of the game. And just to explain the neuroscience part here, this is going to involve a physiomotor tracking task, navigation. You see the little Achillean. Um, and then also a reaction task. So in this case, you tap the screen when you only see the green fish. So this is an example of what's known as a one feature discrimination task. Um, and the video gaming part is like any other video game. It has a score which motivates the user. And what you see is a very happy Achillean indeed with what happened. Um, and then as you collect rewards, you can start to customize your avatar. Uh, amazingly, this avatar uh, bears re remarkable resemblance to Dr. Ghazali. Um, and then you see the reward mode here as you collect these coins as you resolve and do better in the game. Um, now, what I introduced today was really these two concepts of treating a system instead of a component, and also the idea of bringing together these disparate fields. And what gets me really excited is when I think about that slide uh, which I showed around, you know, here's a bunch of medical fields, here are a bunch of non-medical fields, we're only really starting to scratch the surface. And I know the people who are listening to this and people in this audience are going to be the ones who are going to come up with really exciting ideas and combine fields in a way that I can't even begin to imagine. Thanks very much.